Okay, lesson 19, collision detection. This is very useful for creating video games. The question of the day, how can programming help make complicated problems more simple? And vocabulary, abstraction, a simplified representation of something more complex. Abstractions allow you to hide details to help you manage complexity, focus on relevant concepts, and reason about problems at a higher, higher level. So basically, it's a simplified representation of something more complex. So here we have, remember this is collision detection, and our new code is is touching and sprite.debug. This is the main, um, this is the main, the main block we need to pay attention to, but this one's useful too. So let's move on. So here we have dinner time. Run the program to see the robot bring the bunny dinner. When the bunny reaches the bowl, they both stop walking and the bowl becomes empty. What code do you think would help the computer know if two sprites were touching? So that's the, let's look. Okay, so the bowl uh, emptied out. So that's the is touching block that I was referring to when we were looking at the lesson overview. Sprite dot is touching. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Exercise three says using math to figure it out. Computers use math to figure out whether two things are touching. Look at the math on lines 17 to 18 of this program to see how the sprite properties are compared with their width to see whether they are touching. Okay, 17 to 18. Okay, so this is where the abstractions come in. This is very complicated. So we're going to be using things uh, to make this more simple. Read the if statements inside the draw loop and find the different sprite properties, how they are compared. Discuss the code with your partner. Why does the code only use the width and x properties and not the height and y properties? Uh, would you want to write this code every time you checked whether something was touching? Hmm. I don't know why it uses the only the I don't know comma every time you checked something no so no I would not want to write that code every time so width why doesn't it use height I would say it doesn't use it only uses width because they're moving along the x-axis maybe uh, height would be if they were like moving up and down I don't know that could be incorrect Let's check out exercise four. So the whole point of exercise three is really just to tell you, look at how complicated this is. We don't want to do that. So um, moving on to exercise four, that the, the whole idea is to make it more simple. So exercise four is introducing is touching. Writing out the math each time you want to check whether two sprites are touching can take a while. So a pro programmer created the is touching block, which can check whether one sprite is touching another, the target. The computer is still doing the same math as in the previous program, but you don't have to worry about it because another programmer already did that work. Do this. Inside the draw loop, drag the is touching block into the if block. Okay, so we're dragging the is touching block into the if block. Okay. So we did that. Uh, hint. Don't forget to change the sprite to bunny and the target to dinner. Okay. Sprite to bunny. Sprite to bunny. And the target is dinner. And now let's run it. Okay. All right. So, yeah, the whole point, if the bunny is touching the dinner, uh, and you change okay so velocity is set to zero that's why they stop and the animation is set to bowl and that's why the bowl becomes empty because the animation stew is when it's full bowl is when it's empty okay so let's move on to exercise five exercise five applesauce the blender should only turn on when the apple touches it okay so it's already on do this use the new code you have learned to check whether the blender is touching the apple Use a conditional to only shake the blender when the apple is touching it. Hint, you will need to drag two blocks into the workspace. Okay, so there's no if statement in here. So I'm going to assume that we need an if statement because we are going to need if. Oh, okay, yeah, we're going to need if and is touching. 
Okay, does that make sense? Because we're going to need if Apple is touching Blender. And then I think we're just going to move this block of code into the if statement. So yeah, the blender still. So when the apple touches it, does it shake? Yes. Okay, so we did this correct. Let's move on to exercise six. Debugging collisions. The balloon is popping before the tack touches it. Uh, can You can use the debug block to get more information about the pro bug in the program. Okay, so we can move the uh, tack with the arrow keys on your keyboard and the tack pop the balloon before yeah before the tack even touches it so it says run the code and use the arrow keys to move the tack in the code below change balloon.debug to false or false to true okay so let's do that right here on line three i don't know if this capital letter would mess that up that was an accident okay okay so now it shows this is why as soon as the tack touches that green square it pops it that's the problem. Add a new debug block to the code and set the tack sprites debug property to true. Okay, so sprite.debug, put it under tack for organization. Tack.debug, set it to true. Run the code again and discuss with your partner why the balloon is popping early. So like I said, as soon as the tack hits that green square for the balloon, around the balloon, that's when the balloon pops. So that's a problem. Hopefully they'll teach us in exercise seven. That's all you had to do for exercise six. Hopefully they will teach us how to change that because that doesn't really make sense. Okay, so we're on 7A, okay? Debug is touching. Okay, so this is exercise 7A and it is debug is touching. The bunny sprite should change to a new animation when it touches the sun, okay. Figure out why the bunny doesn't react to the collision. Do this, modify the code so that the collision is detected within the draw loop. Okay, so guys, I really hope you can figure this out on your own. Um, I'm pretty sure all we're gonna need to do is move this if, if statement inside the draw loop, but let's see, maybe, yeah, this looks correct. If sun is touching bunny, bunny set animation, bunny happy. Yeah, because look, the bunny is unhappy. And once the sun touches it, I'm sure he'll have a smile. Okay, yeah, perfect. So let's move on to 7B. Okay, 7B. Okay, so this is very important. This is the circular collider. These coins are supposed to stop when they touch, but the colliders are the wrong shape. Change the collider of each coin to a circle. So look, they stop because they're squares, so they are technically touching right now. Do this. Use the dot set collider to change the collider of each sprite to a circle. So this is very important, guys, because you're going to be creating your own games. So remember that block of code. Uh, okay, so set collider. Okay, so each sprite. So we need, there's coin one and there's coin two and i don't know why this this code looks like it should be up here i'd rather move that so go ahead and do that because that helps with organization and then what we're going to do is put a sprite.set collider i guess we can put it there it doesn't matter as long as it's with the rest of the coin one code and we're going to change it from rectangle to circle and then we're going to do the same thing down here coin two circle okay so let's look perfect and it, it already shaped it for you I don't know if you have to edit the shapes um, in the future uh, but this perfectly went around those coins so let's take a look at eight and I'm not going, this is going to be the assessment, so I'm not going to give you the answer, but I can kind of tell you where you should be borrowing code from if you don't get it. Okay, guys, this is very easy. Um, all you have to do is have it so that when the rainbow touches the horse, it changes to a unicorn. So there are multiple levels that we went through in here. 
that will help you with this one. So go through those, and then I'm going to give you hints for the challenges too. Think about when the, the bunny, uh, when the bunny got touched by the sun. It's the same thing here, okay? And I'm going to talk about uh, 9A and 9B. I do want you to complete these. Okay, angle the collider to fit the rolling pin. Set collider with multiple parameters. Set collider can make, take more parameters than just shape. It also takes parameters to specify the X, Y offset, width, and height, and angle. Check out the documentation for an example. I'm going to open that in a new tab. Do this. Use dot set collider with six parameters to give the rolling pin a collider that fits well. Okay, I might do. I might just walk you through this. This sounds complicated. So it says hover over the set collider block in the toolbox to see an example of how to do this. Uh, set collider. Oh wow. Okay. Let's check out these examples. Uh, I'm I'm never never a fan of these examples that they give you. So let's take a look. Tap or click to run. Let's see. Okay, so okay, the angle is a negative forty-five degree angle. So I like that because that that's what tilted it. Uh, zero. It's so the shape is a rectangle. Is, I would think zero is x, zero is y f offset, but I don't get what the y offset would be. Um. Yeah, X offset, oh, X offset, Y offset, width, radius, height. Huh. Okay, I think really you're just going to have to play around with this to, to get this or read this. But this is very helpful, so keep this in mind. Uh, and let's, let's try and play around with it. So, set collider, roller. I probably won't have time in this video to go over 9B. Uh, we do, do we want this to be a rectangle? Yeah, we want this to be a rectangle. And you click on the, these arrows to give them the parameters. So three, four, wait, six parameters. Okay. So here's all six. So Y offset, I don't know, let's say 10. I'll just put 10 for everything and see what happens. Ha. Huh. Uh, that's not that's not right. So let's set those offsets x and y offsets to zero. Hmm. Okay. X y offset width and height. So width and height. I set it to two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah, that's too big. So let's say width one hundred, height one hundred, angle ten. Okay. That's actually like a, I don't know, I'm guessing like a 30 degree angle. It's not a 45 degree angle if you guys know your angles. Nice. That looks exactly right. That looks like a 30 degree angle. Okay, so the height, I think the height needs to be increased and the width needs to be decreased. Cool. Yeah, the height, so the height is probably closer to like 190 or 180, we'll say, and the width. The width is probably like 30. 1800 is not going to work. So we're just trying to get it. Oh, look at that. Perfection. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Okay, great. I finished that. Let's see if I can have time to do uh, 9B. All right, so we're doing 9B. Okay, so here the problem is that when the alien touches the coin, if you look here, the, the um, points keep increasing. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the coin move to a different location. So in this if statement, if ghost is touching coin, we're going to make the coin move to a random X and Y location. OK, so put uh, an X and a Y block in here and then go to math and put random number in each of those. And then Put zero to 400 in both of those. And I'm going to make, so look, I changed the name of the sprite to coin here. And now look, whenever the alien touches it, it changes to a new location. Okay, 
great.